The average car has about 30,000 parts, from the headlights to the tailpipe and all the nuts and bolts in between. Each of these components comes together to create a smooth and reliable mode of transportation. One of these is a small but vital part of a car. Without it, a gasoline-powered car wouldn't be able to start. That part is the spark plug. It is a component that screws into the engine's cylinder head. Spark plugs have high-voltage electricity sent to one end and ignite a spark at the other end. The spark ignites the air and fuel mixture within the engine, creating the combustion that powers your car. The spark plug is a key component of the engine system, playing a major role in fuel economy, clean and efficient combustion, and the reliable operation of engines and catalytic converters. A typical spark plug can generate up to 100 sparks per second, amounting to over 20 million sparks throughout its lifespan. As engines and their electronics become more complex, one of the few tasks left to hobbyists and auto enthusiasts who enjoy getting their hands dirty is the ability to change their spark plugs. Although nearly every other car repair nowadays requires specialized code readers and a college degree to diagnose and fix, changing spark plugs remains accessible and easy to understand. Locating the spark plug is simple. Just lift the hood and look for the wires or coil packs connected to the engine's cylinder head. The spark plugs sit on the top or the side of the engine, all in a row. A four-cylinder engine has four spark plugs. A six-cylinder has six spark plugs. V6 or V8 engines typically have spark plugs evenly separated on each side of the engine. You'll find one spark plug in each cylinder. Some engines, such as Hemi engines, have two spark plugs per cylinder. This means a V8 Hemi engine, for example, with eight cylinders would have a total of 16 spark plugs, two per cylinder. A spark plug consists of a metal threaded shell, a ceramic insulator, and a central electrode. The connector or terminal at the top of a spark plug is where the ignition wire attaches. The connector connects to the copper core of the center electrode. This center electrode is surrounded by insulation, typically made of ceramic material, which helps to channel the high voltage from the ignition system to the gap at the tip of the spark plug. Next is the hex head. This is where you put your socket, which fits for tightening and loosening the plug in its hole in the engine. Now below the hex head, there's a gasket that compresses tightly against the cylinder head, which keeps it from moving. It's also known as a crush washer or the seat. Some plugs have a tapered seat without an additional seal. These are generally used in iron cylinder heads, while plugs with gaskets are usually found in aluminum cylinder heads. At the lower end of the spark plug, a small portion of the central electrode extends beyond the ceramic insulation and threads. This exposed part of the electrode protrudes into the combustion chamber of the engine. The spark that makes the engine run jumps the gap from the very end of the center electrode to the ground electrode. This is what ignites the air and fuel mixture that's been compressed by the piston. The ground electrode is made of metal, with options ranging from stainless steel to titanium. It can come in several shapes as well, from notched or Y-shaped electrodes to triple electrodes. The spark plug requires 15 to 20,000 volts to generate a spark, whereas the car battery provides only around 12 volts. So, to create a higher voltage, an ignition coil is used. It transforms the battery's low energy into the thousands of volts needed to create an electric spark in the spark plug to ignite the fuel. Inside every ignition coil, there are three main components, an iron core, a primary winding, and a secondary winding. The iron core serves to concentrate the magnetic field generated by the primary winding. The primary coil typically has only a few turns of wire, whereas the secondary coil contains hundreds of additional turns. When current flows from the battery through the primary winding, it turns the iron core into a strong electromagnet, and the lines of magnetic force surround the iron core. This magnetic field extends through the secondary winding, inducing a voltage in it. When the current in the primary winding is suddenly interrupted, it creates a high voltage in the secondary winding. This interruption is commonly done by using a switch, transistor, or contact breaker. In modern ignition systems, the interruption can be controlled by an ECU or an ignition module. When the current is interrupted, the magnetic field around the coil collapses, which induces a high voltage in the secondary winding. 
This high voltage is then sent to the spark plug, where it creates a spark that ignites the air-fuel mixture in the engine's combustion chamber. The distance between the tip of the spark plug and the central electrode is called the spark plug gap and is a key factor in the function of a spark plug. For most vehicles, spark plug gaps typically range between 0.028 and 0.060 inches. This gap varies according to different OEM specifications, but generally, cars with lower compression ratios and a leaner air-fuel mixture often use larger spark plug gaps, which allows the spark to ignite the air-fuel mixture more effectively. A larger plug gap size will produce a stronger spark, which can improve combustion efficiency and performance. This is particularly beneficial for modern engines with advanced ignition systems. In higher compression engines, the spark plug gap is often smaller because the conditions are more extreme. Smaller gaps are generally more reliable for producing a spark because the electrical current doesn't have to jump as far, which helps ensure a consistent spark across various conditions. However, in certain conditions, especially at higher RPMs, a smaller gap might not produce a spark strong enough to ignite the air-fuel mixture effectively. The voltage requirement is directly proportional to the gap size. The larger the gap, the more voltage is needed to jump the gap. Gap adjustment is not recommended for iridium and platinum spark plugs because there is a risk of damaging a metal disc welded to the electrode. We know that spark plugs ignite the fuel, but they can also play a role in dissipating engine heat. Spark plugs with high heat dispersal are referred to as cold, while those with less heat dissipating characteristics are known as hot. Cold plugs have less insulation close to the tip, and with less insulation, more heat can be transferred away from the combustion chamber. Cold spark plugs are good for high RPM engines and other situations where the engine operates at a high temperature. Because they transfer heat faster, cold spark plugs can get dirty and become fouled sooner because they don't get hot enough to burn off carbon deposits. Hot plugs have more insulation, which keeps the plug's temperature high enough to burn off carbon deposits and avoid premature fouling. This helps extend the time between spark plug changes. Earlier spark plugs were simpler in design and construction, and they could be disassembled into separate components cleaned, repaired, and reused, which was a practical feature in the early stages of automotive technology. The first spark plug was used in 1860 by Belgian engineer John Joseph Etienne Lenoir. He used the electric spark plug in a gas engine he invented. Some historians have reported that Edmund Berger invented an early spark plug in 1839, although he did not patent his invention. During this period, spark plugs were in the early days of experimentation. Therefore, if Edmund Berger's spark plug did exist, it would likely have been highly experimental in nature. Several patents relating to electrical ignition systems were filed in the late 1890s, including from Serbian engineer Nikola Tesla, British engineer Frederick Richard Sims, and German engineer Robert Bosch. The use of high-voltage spark plugs in commercially viable engines was only made possible after 1902, due to the invention of magneto-based ignition systems by Bosch engineer Gottlob Honnold. Early manufacturers of spark plugs included the American company Champion, the British company Lodge Brothers, and the London-based KLG, who pioneered the use of mica as an insulator. During the 1930s, American geologist Helen Blair Bartlett developed an alumina-ceramic-based insulator for the spark plug, which was a major advancement in the field. Her understanding of petrology and mineralogy allowed her to utilize her geological background to create effective and durable ceramic insulators, improving the performance and reliability of spark plugs. This innovation was significant for the automotive industry as it enhanced the efficiency and longevity of spark plugs. Early spark plugs often had nickel-chromium electrodes and were used in many low-speed, low-compression gasoline engines. These plugs had a lifespan of only 600 miles, whereas modern copper-nickel spark plugs can last up to 18,000 miles. Although the useful life of a spark plug has been extended, its basic function has not significantly changed since the early 1900s. What has changed, however, are the requirements for emissions and service life. 
Prior to 1974 in the U.S., for example, the main concerns that influenced the plug's design were that it fitted properly, operated at the correct self-cleaning temperature, and that it minimized demand on the ignition reserve. In 1974, the U.S. government imposed fuel mandates and regulations to reduce emissions. These required the use of unleaded fuel and led to the introduction of smaller engines and new engine designs, all of which prompted changes in spark plug design. From this point, two factors drove spark plug design. First, since unleaded fuel has a higher burn-off temperature, the plug's heat range needed to be broadened to enable it to reach the self-cleaning temperature at lower loads and to avoid overheating at higher loads. Secondly, the spark plug needed to perform consistently to prevent damaging the catalytic converter. As a result, new materials offering improved corrosion and erosion resistance and providing greater capacity to transfer heat were integrated into the design. One such material was copper, used for the plug's core and surrounded by nickel chromium. Introduced in the early 1980s, this design provides excellent heat transfer, a wider heat range, and improved anti-fouling. By the end of the 1980s, most spark plug makers had switched to using copper core, which remains the standard today. The copper spark plug is the most commonly used due to its lower cost compared to other types. While almost all spark plugs feature a copper core, many people refer to the standard spark plug simply as a copper spark plug. Copper spark plugs can run cooler and potentially provide more power in certain performance driving conditions. However, copper is a good conductor of electricity but is extremely soft, so it wears out relatively quickly due to the high pressure and heat generated in the engine's cylinder. Because of their short lifespan, most copper spark plugs need to be changed every 20,000 miles. Despite these drawbacks, copper spark plugs remain a good choice for certain applications. They are best suited for older vehicles, such as those from the early 1980s and earlier, with low-voltage distributor-based ignition systems. Avoid using copper spark plugs in high-energy distributorless ignition systems as they wear out too quickly. There is one exception. Some late-model high-performance engines are specifically designed for copper spark plugs. In these cases, copper plugs are considered high-performance. If your owner's manual specifies copper plugs, don't upgrade to platinum or iridium spark plugs, as this could result in poor engine performance. Consult your mechanic for guidance on selecting the best spark plug for your car. Yet copper isn't the only material that has been combined with nickel chromium to improve performance. In 1960, Bosch recognized the value that platinum added to automotive spark plugs, providing improved corrosion and erosion resistance and a longer performance life than found with the standard copper core plug. Bosch then introduced the first platinum-tipped plug, Platinum has a higher melting point than the nickel alloy. Also, it is harder which is the reason it maintains its sharp edge for a longer time than the copper spark plug. Another advantage is that it easily handles high heat, which increases the overall lifespan of the spark plug and can easily last 100,000 miles. Platinum spark plugs generally run a little bit hotter than copper plugs, which helps burn deposits off the spark plug better and helps prevent fouling. Platinum spark plugs come in two varieties, single and double platinum. A single platinum plug is much like a copper spark plug with a platinum disc welded to the center electrode. A double platinum spark plug has a platinum disc on both the center and side electrodes. Platinum spark plugs are usually the best for newer vehicles with electronic distributor-based ignition systems. If your owner's manual recommends platinum spark plugs, don't downgrade to copper spark plugs. Instead, upgrade to either double platinum or iridium spark plugs. In 1994, NGK introduced the first iridium spark plugs as a long-life alternative to platinum plugs. Because it has a higher melting temperature than platinum, is six times harder, eight times stronger, and more corrosion-resistant than platinum or most other metals. Iridium spark plugs feature a thin wire center electrode with a diameter of as little as 0.4 millimeters. This fine wire electrode conducts electrical energy better and increases firing efficiency. 
Because of all these qualities, iridium spark plugs last about 25% longer than comparable platinum plugs. Many car makers require iridium spark plugs or iridium platinum combination spark plugs for coil on plug ignition systems or multi coil ignition systems. If your owner's manual specifies iridium spark plugs, don't downgrade. They're not going to perform as well. As automotive technology advanced, engineers began exploring ways to enhance the performance of spark plugs. This led to the development of multi-electrode designs. Initially introduced in Mazda rotary engines in 1971, these plugs feature not just one, but multiple ground electrodes surrounding the central electrode. These designs aim to improve ignition reliability and performance by adding additional ground electrodes around the central electrode. The core idea is simple. By providing several pathways for the electrical spark, these plugs reduce the likelihood of fouling and ensure more consistent ignition performance. In a standard spark plug, you have one ground electrode. With multiple ground electrodes, usually two, three, or four electrodes, there are additional endpoints offering alternative routes for the spark. This design was thought to help the spark plug maintain efficiency over time, as even if one electrode began to wear down or foul, the others could take over the task of sparking. Manufacturers believed that by spreading the wear across multiple electrodes, the spark plug's lifespan could be significantly extended. After all, if one electrode wears out, you have others ready to step in, theoretically allowing the plug to last two to three times longer than a traditional single electrode plug made from the same material. However, the myth is that the spark jumps from the center electrode to all four side electrodes. This is not true at all. The spark actually jumps from the sharpest and nearest edge of the center electrode to the nearest sharp edge of one side electrode. As that side electrode's sharp edge wears down, the spark will jump to the next sharpest and nearest side electrode. Another myth is that they fire more than one spark at a time, but this does not happen. Instead, the spark will jump via the path of least resistance, be it due to heat, proximity to the center, or the condition of the electrode itself. The main drawback of multiple ground electrodes is that the extra electrodes in a spark plug can interfere with the ignition process by absorbing some of the heat energy intended to ignite the fuel, which may weaken the initial flame kernel. This shielding effect from the extra electrodes can result in a less efficient combustion process, potentially leading to increased fuel consumption. So that's it. What do you think about this video? Let me know in the comments. If you found it helpful, give it a like and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching.